Welcome back to another edition of the Throws Doc Podcast. I'm your doc, Dr. Charles Inferno. We're writing scripts to cure your throwing ailments. Ailments we're going to talk about today. Watched it happen firsthand last night at first track meet at Hone College. It's locust of control. And the reason why we're going to talk about that and how the quality of your coach-athlete relationship can mitigate, let's try that again, mitigate, locus of control for the positive. So this is what happened. I'm at school, right, getting ready to head out, and I uh, get a text message from our head coach saying, hey, by the way, we're at uh, Houghton here, and we're supposed to throw at 4 o'clock. Our event's supposed to start at 4. I was going to make it in no time, maybe 10 minutes to spare. Uh, but due to the number and volume of athletes that are throwing at the throwing events, we are moving up the start of the throwing events to 3 o'clock. So athletes were there at 2.15, expecting to start warming up at 3.45. And now we are warming up at 2.45. <laughs> of course, I'm still at school, so it's, it's out of my control. So in some exchanges with athletes, we're able to kind of mitigate the concern because with our athletes and the way you know, track and field dashboards and systems are, if you don't have a, a, a mark from a prior season and, and what have you, um, you have to be entered at a no, no distance, right? So basically everybody, all freshmen, for the most part, they should be, entered at no distance, right? Because you've never competed in the event, what have you. So, yeah, all my athletes are going to be competing in flight one, of course, because we're not going to be marks. So, in the time that I wasn't able to be there, all of, you know, chaos could have ensued, if you will, right? Athletes could have lost focus, got nervous, like, where's coach, like, what's going to happen, right? So, we plan for things of that nature, right? I talk, I have conversations about that stuff all the time with my kids. Right, what's within our direct control in competition? Um, what what can we do to you know support that? Support training. Support what's going to happen in competition. Sent a couple of text messages. Right, the guys were more geared up to throw the weight anyway. Right, so um, I missed shot put. They did okay in the shot put. Right. Um, I don't think as well as, as we wanted to, as what we expected to, to throw. Uh, women did well in the weight throw, pretty much where I thought that they were going to be, for the most part, right? Um, and uh, it's just out of our control, right? It's out of our control how many athletes uh, the meet director is going to let in the competition. It's out of our control that there are 64 shot putters for men and 54 for women. Um, it's out of our control that they're going to move the start time up a full hour. A lot of things are out of our control at track meets, right? Outdoor, show up, it's beautiful, and then all of a sudden the heavens open up and it starts raining, right? And what do you do as an athlete? Like, how do you prepare as a coach in order to, you know, help, help, help support in that situation? So I'll give you an example. When we were getting ready for D3 Outdoor Nationals with Lewis, we were going to Iowa, Waverly, Iowa, right? We were going to compete at Warburg College. And uh, I think I got that right, Warburg College. Grinnell is a different college, I think. Anyway, so all week in our training at NAS is beautiful. 70s, sunny, lovely. And um, one day I bring a bucket to, of water to practice and I just I throw it in the circle. Coach, what are you doing? Lewis. So, well, I was like, there's a chance that it could rain during the hammer competition when we compete on Saturday. It's not raining now. Like, I understand it's not raining now, but we've basically thrown in two weeks of beautiful weather. And if it does rain there, I want to make sure that we have at least a couple of decent throws to be ready, right? So he humored me, 
way to practice, wasn't very good. Well low in this range of competition. Like throwing in the you know lower lower 54s, higher 53s, which is kind of like typical for 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 what we were trying to, to focus and master that we uh, had a PR of 58 and change. So go to nationals, first flight, beautiful weather, gorgeous, sunny, then it kind of got a little darker. And we warmed up and we looked really good and then it started raining and uh, as prepared as I am brought my rain jacket put on my, my rain pants I don't like being wet in competition I was like all right we got a situation here Lewis goes in round one sets a personal best round two close round three personal best again and it's raining right kind of like Drizzling enough to be annoying, but enough water that it started to. Um, uh, gosh, what's the right word? Pool in the circle, right? So it wasn't an all-out downpour, but enough to to annoy some throws. Okay. Now I don't know if he PR'd that day. He was probably going to PR anyway. But at least one day of beautiful weather and just dumping water in the circle helped us. We, that was in our control, right? So having that type of experience. Getting back to our meet yesterday, right? How long it took in between each throws. So I was timing some of our athletes. Five, six, seven minutes in between throws, right? We don't do that in practice. Usually we're able to run through a, a solid practice and like... An hour and a half, quality reps, very efficient reps, and we're out of there, right? So, got five athletes, I'll throw in the first flight. Took a long time, 16 throwers by three throws, right? Uh, and then we wait. And Greg waited, and waited, and waited. Until 10 o'clock, right? So he threw around 6.15ish, flight one. 10.15 is when the final started, okay? Totally out of our control, but because we had taken such a sheer volume of throws, because we were conditioned, because we had talked about these things ahead of time, I felt as though that they were better prepared, right? Um, and I, I just, I don't know if it's just me, like I nerd out on that stuff, right? How many throwers per flight, okay? This is about how long it's gonna take. Right? When we throw the hammer outdoors, it takes a long time. We have a ton of hammers, right? You can go out, retrieve, come back, and so forth, right? Shot puts a little different. You're able to kind of progress those throws through those throws, not as, doesn't take as long, right? Weight does, hammer surely takes a long time, so does the discus. Okay. So it's kind of like having a strong bond with your athletes and being honest with them and being comfortable with them and really just letting them know, like, listen, like, this is really, this is the scope of the situation. This is what it's gonna be like. This is what we gotta do to handle it, right? And uh, in my younger days, I suppose, I don't know, I just shared a video on Instagram of 16 years ago throwing at Cornell, December of 07, my goodness, man, time flies, of, things being out of our control, right? And even thinking of that meet, got there with my parents, right? Showed up, my grandfather, expecting to throw in the last flight, right? As you typically would do. For some reason, we got there, fortunately we got there early before the actual competition started. And they said, okay, we're doing a reverse throwing this, uh, this meet top flight goes first it's like okay so i just sat in the car for about two hours i walked around for about 15 minutes usually it takes me for forever to warm up like a good 45 minutes hour and uh through had a personal bus through out of my mind right finished second to uh to uh, to, uh, uh jesse doty from uh unattached right my training partner through syracuse chargers so if you don't prepare for certain situations, if you don't have somebody that's going to tell you that, like they're really doing a disservice. And um, oh, we're going to continue this conversation in a moment.